Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Brentfield from Quest, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Reconnect Dive Deep session. I have a few reminders before we get started. Attendees will remain muted throughout the session. However, if you'd like to be unmuted to ask a question, use the raise hand feature. A Quest staff member will give you permission to speak at that time. Attendees can also type their questions into the Q&A module in the Zoom toolbar. We will address any questions at the end of the session. At this time, I'll turn things over to our speaker, Jessica Mann. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Mann from SpearMC. Um, our company specializes in PeopleSoft, and we have several bolt-on solutions designed to integrate with PeopleSoft, and I'll be talking about our labor cost distribution and effort reporting solution today. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, so the solution um, allows you to perform labor cost distribution as well as effort certification. Um, it is a, has multiple modules. Uh, there is a separate module for tracking effort commitments, total professional effort planning, um, but I'm going to be spending the majority of the time today talking about the labor cost distribution and effort certification. The solution also allows you to perform salary redistributions. This is actually kind of one of my favorite uh, pieces of the functionality. Um, and it can also automatically um, create a sophisticated benefits calculation for you. So based on uh, your configuration of uh, what's applicable uh, for benefits, or we can take benefits coming in from payroll and distribute it based on how we're distributing the salary. So options there, it does include workflow and some dashboard reporting, and it is built in the 100% people tool. So it's all custom objects. So very minimally impacted by your PUM updates, highly configurable and also extendable within the defined design conventions. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, it is comprised of three different modules. Uh, here, we're gonna be spending time in the LCD certified module today. Um, and if we have some time, I'll go into the committed and workload planning modules. So for the LCD uh, certification module, it really was designed to close the gaps um, in delivered PeopleSoft H HCM functionality for research accounting. Um, so it allows you to create labor distributions um, for future payrolls. And I mentioned before, uh, go back and redistrib redistribute payroll and um, bring in the employee level information with those redistributions. So employee ID, pay end date, uh, that's often a pain point um, for customers uh, uh, that they're not able to easily do redistributions and get that employee level information. Uh, allows you to handle benefit allocations. And then it has built-in functionality for managing cost sharing. So whether it's uh, specific mandatory cost sharing that you've committed um, as a part of the condition of the award, or um, if a uh, project has a specific salary cap, um, they has their specific functionality to automatically do that calculation. And I'll show you an example of that. Okay, so going into the uh, LCD or uh, EDB solution, um, first, I wanted to discuss how it does uh, integrate uh, within PeopleSoft. Technically, it can sit either on HCM or financials. Uh, we do typically uh, have it sit over on the financials uh, database. You do not have to have the grants management module in order to use this bolt-on. You don't even have to have project costing. Uh, but for the most part, uh, our customers do have PeopleSoft Grants Management, and you'll see the boxes in blue highlighted are those modules required for grants. Uh, and for our typical implementations, how um, uh, this works is there's delivered interfaces to pull in information from PeopleSoft Grants and projects. So uh, you're not having duplicate entry for entering in projects and sponsors. Uh, project teams, that sort of thing. And then we also have delivered integration uh, from really any payroll or timekeeping system. Um, it could be PeopleSoft, uh, but it can also be uh, any other uh, payroll system 
Uh, it is an interface that is configurable so we can bring in uh, multiple um, uh, uh, payroll and time and labor uh, sources. And then as uh, you know, we bring in that payroll information and do the uh, distribution calculation, uh, typically we integrate or interface that over to PeopleSoft GL. Uh, and I'll show you a screenshot of that later where it will be um, edited, budget checked, and then once that journal is, is successfully posted, then we have uh, in uh, a feed to the delivered project costing interface, assuming you're using projects, uh, it, the detail of that distribution is loaded through the delivered project costing interface um, and then picks up from grants management processing or project costing processing from there. Okay. All right, so here's an example of what uh, is a distribution profile. Essentially, how do we want to distribute um, time for an individual. How this page uh, looks is configurable. We can have various sections, categories of projects. In this example, we just have two. Uh, I'll show you a couple others where it's either more simple or it has more groups of projects. And we have the ability to either dis distribute by percent, which we see here, hours or dollars, as I mentioned before, it automatically calculates salary cap and cost sharing um, approvals. How you you know want to be able to uh, you know um, control the the distributions that are going uh, to happen in the future. You can determine your approval routing, and we also have the ability to configure various validation rules. So, uh, for example, you know having a hard a hard error if you do not enter 100% of your time uh, or you're entering over 100%, you know, you can have either warnings or hard stop errors uh, and those are configurable. So here's an, another example of uh, a couple of more examples of what a distribution page might look like. Um, the one on the left, as I mentioned, has three uh, groupings of uh, time. So the first one, non-sponsored activities. So that could be going to just a department. We have sponsor projects. Uh, and then down below, it might be going to a project, but it is not uh, externally funded. Um, and then over to the last, a little bit more simple, just a couple groupings and just showing the actual project ID. So that's configurable. And who sees what um, as you go into the page is also configurable, whether they see dollars or just percent efforts, uh, that is a decision you can make. For the cost sharing, uh, we have three different categories of cost sharing in the system. We have uh, mandatory cost sharing, which is required by the sponsor as a condition of accepting that award. Um, over the cap, um, so that's for where your projects, uh, typically these are federal, um, where there is a set limit of how much uh, uh, salary um, can be charged to a project. And then the last one, voluntary cost sharing is something where you as an organization want to track your um, your uh, effort and, and um, um, uh, contribution to the project, but it's not necessarily required by the sponsor. So three so, sort of different buckets of cost sharing that is tracked in the system. Um, and then as you go into our cost sharing view, uh, you can see the breakdown into those various buckets for each project. So this first one uh, is an example where we have uh, time being charged 10% to clinical trials, no cost sharing in that particular example. So all of their uh, salaries will go to um, uh, be directly charged to the project. Next one is charitable trust where uh, we're gonna be distributing 30% of that individual's time, uh, but uh, the organization is cost sharing 10% of it. So it's gonna do the math between of that 30%, how much is gonna be charged to the sponsor and how much goes to cost sharing. And then the last one is an example where we have a salary cap. 
uh, which you can see what is the actual over the cap percentage and we can drill down into the detail. Uh, I did forget to mention this is uh, all demo data. Uh, Walt Disney here in this example, um, but our salary cap for this particular project is uh, 203,700. And so therefore the system will automatically ca calculate what is the over the cap percentage and divide out that um, effort to the project and put it into a particular salary cap bucket, bucket the rest uh, going to be charged to the project. Um, and then there's also a hierarchy in the system for defining what is the salary cap. So it can flow through at a very high level from the flow through sponsor, or uh, it can come in from the sponsor on the award, or at uh, a lower level, we can override at an individual project level, set it at a project level, even down to particular roles on the project. So quite a bit of flexibility on um, uh, where you wanna set that actual salary cap rate. In terms of integrating to the GL, so we have the overall flow at the beginning. Um, we do typically take advantage of uh, um, the functionality of journal generation to bring data from the bolt-on into the GL. So we first have a process uh, that creates our GL distribution, basically our debits and credits. It puts it into a GL staging uh, table, which we then journal generate into the GL. And then once those journals are post edited and successfully posted, then we have another process to take the detailed version of that data and send it into the project costing interface table. Okay, so taking advantage of a lot of the uh, already delivered functionality within financials. And then for redistributions, um, you there's no limit on how many redistributions um, that you can do. Uh, essentially, you're going back in time and making changes uh, using the same effective date and it will do the math for you um, and carry forward the employee level information such as employee ID, pay end date, um, and of course, that would still that would get posted to the current period, but it brings forward that historical information, which is awesome. Also, um, really cool functionality: retroactive benefit adjustments. So, um, you know, we see this a lot in healthcare, where uh, you want to charge create uh, a fringes at a set rate, and then that typically uh, gets reevaluated and changed on a yearly basis, but you may not know it. Uh, at the beginning of the year, the fiscal year, uh, and therefore the system does have the ability to go back and uh, go back in time and do a, a benefit um, rate uh, calculation for you when you receive it after the fact. So let's um, go ahead and take a look at a video of what this looks like. First, we're going to um, you know assume we have a brand new employee just starting and they're going to be entering their first uh, distribution profile. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we're gonna circle back around and I'll show you what the redistribution looks like. Okay, so let's click start. All right, so we put, put in our employee ID, our as of date is, uh, is that effective date. As of this date, uh, which could be mid pay period, um, we will be distributing um, the individual's time based on, in this example, a percent effort. So we're going to add a new distribution of a project ID. So we have our first project, clinical trial project. And we're going to specify, uh, uh, well, actually first, let's add a, a second project to our sponsor project section. And now we're gonna go ahead and fill out how much effort we're gonna be uh, spending on each of those projects. In this example, the non-sponsored activities basically is the offset and is 
automatically calculated. Okay, and so for our second project, charitable trust, we're going to put in our cost share percent of 10%. Okay, it's automatically calculating, uh, ensuring we have 100% uh, accounted for. And as we go into our cost sharing view, once again, we can see that breakdown of uh, how much will be charged direct to the project versus cost sharing. And uh, once we're done, we can go ahead and send it through workflow approvals. All right, so that is our uh, first distribution profile. Um, let's assume it's gone through all of the, you know, it got approved, it's finalized, it's gonna be distributing payroll. And now we can go ahead and uh, I can show you an example of what a redistribution looks like. All right, so Let's go ahead and say, oh, we forgot we had a, a third project that we were going to be spending our time on. So notice we just had entered sequence one. We will add a new distribution profile. In this case, the same effective date as before. It's going to ask if we want to copy it from the existing, in which case we took the default. So now we are in se sequence two and we're going to make a change. In this case, adding a new project and we'll update our effort percentages. Okay, and once again, uh, we can take a look at the cost sharing and ah, uh, yes, for this particular project, there is a cap uh, and it will calculate what is that percentage of over the cap that will be charged to however we specify the salary cap distribution to go to. Okay, so as before, we see that cap and we, we know we can bring in that cap from various levels in the hierarchy. Okay. And once we're happy with that, once again, we can send, we can save the distribution profile and send it through uh, approval workflow. Okay, once it gets approved, then the system would automatically go through, do the calculation and send that adjustments uh, just like it would a regular uh, distribution goes to the GL, it goes to project costing, assuming you're using those modules. Okay, let me just see if there's any questions in the chat. Okay, nothing in the chat so far. Great, well then I'm going to move on to um, talking about the effort reporting uh, piece of the solution. Okay, so once again here, we have configuration decisions to make as you're uh, setting up the system for effort certifications. For example, how do you want to, how often do you want to do effort certification? So that will determine how you calculate um, your effort periods. What also workflow, what are the steps that you wanna go through to kick off this certification? Uh, one example that you know, we're gonna use in this particular, particular demo is we have a first award administrator taking the first um, look at things before it gets routed to the PI or knowledgeable person. And once they've um, uh, made any adjustments, they've done their certification, then it goes back to the award administration to, to finalize and make any redistributions if necessary. So features include role specific data views. So once again, what a person can see, what a person can do, uh, that's all configurable and, and handled uh, through security. You can also have role specific validations. It keeps a full audit uh, trail of the certification process. Uh, we can have built in tolerances. Uh, so for example, if somebody uh, had a slight change of uh, one or 2%, is that allowable to go through to final certification or not? Those are the things that uh, you would define as well as the ability to enter in comments. Okay, so as we go into the effort certification uh, pages within uh, the bolt-on, they do look um, quite similar to the distribution profile page. However, 
uh, you have the ability to um, add additional columns for people to see if you would like. So in, for uh, example, I'm logged in here as the award administrator. Uh, and this particular role is seeing payroll dollars uh, as well as the hours and the effort percent. Um, but you may not want everybody to see that in the uh, flow. So that is configurable for a particular role. So we're looking in um, for a particular effort period, what is the total payroll that has been distributed across uh, the projects or departments? Uh, you can also you know, go into the cost sharing view again to see uh, how much has been allocated dollar-wise across the various buckets, direct, mandatory, over the cap, and voluntary. And um, the, the steps and how the workflow routes is configurable. So let's go ahead and see an example of that. Cool. Uh, in this example, uh, the first step is the award administrator who's gonna come in, uh, take a first look and um, say, yep, as far as I know, everything looks good right now. I'm gonna initiate the certification pro process and send it out to the PI or an, our knowledgeable person. Okay, so you see they see the payroll dollars here. Uh, and now I'm going to log out, come back in as uh, the certifier knowledgeable um, employee. Now you can see uh, it's, it's simpler here. We are just seeing the effort, cert uh, the effort percent hours. And I can go ahead and make changes to that effort. Um, based on this particular role, I can say, yep, uh, I'm going to go ahead and certify that and try to com complete it. But we can also have um, uh, validation rules to say, no, I need you for this step to actually click the button to show, yes, you've read uh, that message above and you agree with it. OK, so what that message says is configurable. So uh, we had the PI do the certification step. And now uh, the last step here is going back to the award administrator. They're going to say, OK, I see the PI completed. I want to complete my step. But no, uh, we have an error here. We have a little red uh, circle with a, um, a slash through it, meaning um, based on our tolerances, we do need to go back and do a redistribution uh, because the effort entered is less than the pay distribution percentage. The tolerance, we're not within the tolerance. We do need to go back and make that adjustment based on how they said they spent their time. So we're going to do another redistribution based uh, very similar to what we saw in the earlier example. We'll um, enter in the employee ID and the effective date. Now we're at sequence three and we're going to go back and adjust the time down based on what the PI said. So we have 30% for that last general surgery project. Okay, so and we'll, um, uh, once we're happy with that, just like a regular redistribution, we would send it over through approvals. If you have approvals defined, it would go through uh, the batch processing to create that redistribution. And then what's really nice is, um, you know, the PI already did their uh, certification. Uh, now that award admin on the last step, they can go ahead and do their step to complete the process. It does not need to go back to the PI uh, after that redistribution uh, was initiated. Oh, I forgot to mention there's a little um, box at the top that tells you uh, if they're over the camp. Okay, so that was uh, an example of effort certification. And I'm going to just see if there's any questions in the chat. I do not see any. So I'll pause just a second to see if anybody wants to ask any uh, specific questions. Otherwise, I will go ahead and um, talk about the other two modules within the solution.
Alrighty, I don't see any questions and we have uh, a few minutes left. So let's move on. Got to mention here the uh, dashboard for effort certification. Um, so you can kind of track where things are in, uh, in each of the different steps. Um, uh, and this is configurable how, uh, how you, um, uh, that obviously the number of roles that you have in workflow. So here's is a few more, an example of one that has a little bit more steps. And you can see if any of the Everett certification has errors that need to be addressed. Okay, so, and then based on where you click, then you're gonna get the results, uh, the detailed results of where the certification is at. Okay, so that's Everett certification dashboard. And then going into the other two um, connected modules, we have committed and work workload planning. Starting with the committed modules, so the LCD um, labor cost distribution modules is really how do I wanna distribute um, time for an, an individual. Coming into the commitments module, this pivots it where you see the project ID on top and how the individuals on that project plan to spend their time um, over uh, the duration of the project. Uh, so this is helpful if you have projects where you're, um, uh, you have a requirement to um, the sponsor that individuals will, a key, key personnel will spend a specific um, amount of time on the project. Um, and so there you can kind of see the ebb and flow of individuals over time and make sure over the life of the project, I'm meeting that commitment to the sponsor. Okay. All right, and then lastly, the workload planning module. Um, this feature was developed, um, it came out of a, a higher ed requirement uh, to be able to um, plan out 100% of uh, individuals time working on both research as well as non-research activity. Okay, so in, in this case, we have the buckets of time um, of instruction, organized research, going to specific projects, and then we may have other buckets of time, example, department administration. So allowing you to plan into the future um, how individuals are uh, spending 100% of their time. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I can, uh, we have a, a couple minutes here. I can just mention the fact, you know, kind of reinforcing uh, the configuration options that you have. Um, so given an example of a couple of our, our last uh, most recent implementations, uh, in this case, two healthcare uh, organizations, how they define their certification period. You know, uh, it could be quarterly, it could be monthly. We've also had some of our customers do semi-annually. The timing of when you wanna do that certification, um, it can be either before the distribution actually is submitted to the GL and project costing, or it can be more of the after the fact. So in Temple's example, the quarterly that is, uh, the certification is happening after the fact, whereas our park view, uh, it is actually before it even, that certification comes in uh, before it's sent, any distribution is sent to the to GLPC. Cost sharing, um, lots of options here. We can specify specific chart field strings covering the expenditures, or we can ut utilize uh, PeopleSoft grants management delivered cost sharing functionality of uh, special analysis types. So how you define your period of performance, uh, that's more of a, I guess, just delivered financials um, functionality, you know, so it could be your uh, period of performance is defined by activity ID, a different project ID, or uh, budget ref and accounting dates. So that uh, is just delivered functionality, but could impact um, how the bolt-on performs. You may have various different employee types. 
um, how you want benefits to be calculated, options there. I think I mentioned we can bring it in from payroll uh, and distribute it out based on the dollars in proportion with payroll, uh, like Temple, or you can utilize the bolt-on to create a sophisticated accrual based on the employee type rates. Um, so how you're managing benefits can be uh, calculated within the bolt-on. Uh, workflow, very configurable, uh, how many steps you want in the various roles, what they see, what they do. Um, so lots of uh, uh, variations that we've seen uh, across our customers within the, uh, within the implementations. Okay, well, I think I have now uh, gone over just a little bit. Um, so I will wrap it up here and just uh, say thank you again so much for attending the demo. And um, I am very happy um, to uh, respond to individual questions if you have any other specific questions for your organizations or if you would like to have a, a demo um, put on for your organization, happy to do that as well. So uh, once again, um, Jessica Mann from SpearMC. So my email is jessica.mann at spearmc.com. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of the con uh, conference.